Hi guys, James here from plumberparts.co.uk. Today we're going to be looking at S-Plan heating systems, how they're wired up. They're a very, very common type of control that we have in heating systems in the UK. We get asked this question all the time. You did a video about it 10 years ago. Can you do an updated version of that video? We're even going to use light bulbs to show you where the lives go. We're also going to pop out on a real life job as well so you can see the true nature and the true hell of S-Plan systems and their wiring. So please hit the subscribe button by the end of this video you should be pretty much an expert on S-Plan heating systems. Remember as well to hold tight. Let's get on with the video. My rudimentary table. Probably needs a couple of screws. Now we're ready to roll. So then guys, what are the main components that we have on a two port S-Plan system? Let's firstly start with where the electrics come in. So we're going to have a 13 amp fuse spur. We're not gonna be having one in this video because I'm just gonna plug it in for the purposes of the demonstration. We're then gonna have an absolutely massive wiring center. And um, by the way, all the stuff you see in this video, this, the time clocks, two port valves, the drills, and all the tools that I use, you can buy on our Amazon shop, there's links below. If you buy anything there, we get a weenie bit of commission. It helps the channel out, doesn't cost you any extra. It's just a lovely thing to do, all right? The next thing we have will be a programmer. So I've just got a really basic programmer here. They have, a flat panel at the back just like so, so they easily go into where they've got to go. So we'll have a programmer there, just like that. Next in line, and I've butchered it off the tank that's just had a shot there, we've got our tank thermostat. So this will be telling us how hot we want our hot water to be. We're also gonna have as well a room thermostat, but I haven't got one here today. I couldn't find one laying around in the van. So you're just gonna have to imagine that it's there. I'll draw it on later on. But a room thermostat is effectively a switch as well. Does exactly the same thing as this. After that, we've got our two port valves just here. Two port valves just open and close. They get a life supply to them and they've also got a separate switch supply to tell things like the pump, which I'm just gonna get now. So we've got a little velo para here. Pumpy beast. So that's another major component in the system. Also, we're gonna have things like a boiler as well, but we have to imagine that the boiler's here. The good thing about S-Plan systems is often the live supply to the pump is shared with the boiler anyway, unless you've got something like a pump overrun, but we're not gonna go into that in this video. That's slightly more complicated electrics. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use this board here to wire up our system. We're gonna be able to hide wires around the back, so you're gonna be able to see there. And I'm also gonna be able to show you when lives happen, when lives happen and occur, using these light bulbs. Right then guys, so the first thing we're actually gonna have coming in is a live supply, that is it. A live supply that is switched. All heating systems come when it comes to a live from one place, if you're lucky. But always remember to make sure you're gonna have to have some sort of electrical tester to figure out what's going on here. This video hopefully is gonna be really, really good for the apprentices as well. The next thing I pretty much do is you're gonna get your control center, your wiring center, Put on the wall. Now, a lot of the time, wiring centers have all their little loops and everything put in already. We might use them, we might not. There's not actually any guidance as to how the loops on this one work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna poke out, wow, 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 that bit. Um, and then we're just gonna push this through here like so. And then I'm just gonna pop a couple of screws on there to make sure it's nicely installed, okay? One thing when you're doing the wiring on these heating systems is you kind of wanna make sure that you've got quite a lot of flex always available. So I know straight away that I've got to strip this off quite a lot further than I normally would, which is a bit annoying. At this point, my bro Josh ran me up. Hey up, sweetie, how was it going? Hiya. Oh mate, I am literally in the middle of filming right now, man. Uh, and we actually had a chat about this video over the phone, but I'll put that chat in the comments video that goes out on Wednesday. So be sure to put your comments below and then I'll address your comments in Wednesday night's video. Right, so we wanna be getting our live, this is our main live bit in here. Oh, and honestly guys, if every heating system was wired up like this, our lives would be so, so much easier. We're gonna pop our neutral. Now we might need to add other neutrals in later on. We might need to share connecting blocks on this. And then we're gonna, for some stupid reason, put our earth all the way over here. Make sure you twist the wire up a little bit, and if you really want to, you can um, put a little bit of solder on there if that's the sort of way you wanna do things. What we then do after that is we have our first set of switches. Heating systems rely on switches all the time. And our first set of switches are gonna come in the form of our programmer, okay? So let's bang that in now. Yeah. 
So what I'm doing here is taking a permanent live. You can see that our switch live went into that live terminal and then loops over to the number 11 terminal, but that might be in a different terminal for you guys. This is just this particular installation. I'm giving you an idea of how to trace the wiring. So we're gonna take a permanent live through the little light bulb so you can see that it's working. And then as you can see here, we're gonna wire our permanent live neutral and earth into the back of the programmer. To prove that it's working, just watch this. Right then guys, so the power is plugged back in. You can see that because boom, that comes on. But also now we've got our live supply going over to our programmer. So we should see now, look, that is now lit up and come on. And now look, we should be able to switch heating on and off and all that sort of stuff and do all our programming and work like that as well. So what is the next bit when it comes to installing this equipment? Where do we go next? Well, the next thing we do is we now say, right, we've got a hot water stream, a hot water channel, and we've also got a heating channel. So let's concentrate on the hot water channel for now. How does that switch? So if you look at the back of one of these, you're gonna see that it says heating off, hot water off, heating on, all that sort of stuff. For S-Pan systems with two port valves, we only need to worry about the ports that say on. So if I look on here, we've got our neutral, our live, our domestic hot water off, our heating off, our domestic hot water on, and our heating on. So three is where we're gonna be taking our live from in a minute. A few minutes later, we've got our live coming in, and we're only using this light bulb as a, as, a, as a thing so you can see it, you know? And then it comes out at number three, our hot water side comes out at number three like that, and that goes in here. It's gonna get switched in there, and then we're going out into this bulb here, but obviously the bulb is just for indication. And then it's gonna to go to the motor side, of that. So a little tip I'd like to give you when it comes to these systems is when you're wiring them up, you're gonna have loads and loads of wires. But if we actually look at it, we have a live. We have a live out of here going into that. Then a live going in to this. The neutrals and the earths always go back to this point up here. So that's easy, isn't it? They just have to go back together, that's fine. The only other thing we need to think about, and we'll do that in a minute, is how we tell our boiler and our pump to go on. Our pump is still sat here in limbo, it's got no power going to it. So how do we tell the pump and the boiler, hey, one of the valves is open now, you need to come on, you need to come on right now. Uh, sit there doing nothing all day, hey, do something. And that's where the micro switch inside one of these works. Most two port and three port and motorized valves in general will have a thing called a micro switch. What happens is, is when we have a live supply supplied over to our motor, the motor will wind open and then you'll see a small arm just here will start to move round to where the micro switch is. You can see us pressing it that there. A micro switch is exactly what it is. It's just a switch that when pressed by that little actuator arm when it's open, will switch a live supply from one wire coming in and then sending it back out again. Now remember, Different valves have different colored wires. So for this one today, we're just gonna talk about the colors of this particular valve. But the basic principle and way that they work is exactly the same. Another thing to look at while we've got a close up of this valve is the auto and manual arm. This is if you've got a problem with the system, you can manually then latch open the valve. Sometimes if you do this and you find that it sort of springs and stops and you can feel the cogs aren't very happy, you're probably gonna to have to change the head. So what do we do? How do we tell the pump that's just hanging here in limbo and the boiler, hey, that's open, this is on, we need some power now. But what we do, we use a series of permanent lives. Now a permanent live, we go around here, on one of these two port valves, is often I usually use the orange wire. Now as we saw a minute ago when we were looking through the switch of a two port valve, we wanna take our permanent live. Now where do we find a permanent live? Let's think about that. We know for a fact that that's a permanent live, we know that that's a permanent live, and I've linked over here, just using this bit here, into here to give myself a little bit more room, just physical room to get the wires into the terminal blocks, because that's something you're gonna come up against when you do this. And there we go, so now we've got a permanent live going down our orange wire, it goes through that switch, and then out of the gray wire. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm just gonna put a light bulb just here, the switch live is now live and on, and then that will supply the pump and the boiler, and we're just gonna have them together just within the pump itself, because the boiler and the pump usually share the same live. The heating system works in exactly the same way. The radiator is working exactly the same way. Apart from the fact that they don't have one of these, they have a room thermostat. That's where the switching goes on. But for now, let's get this little bit in here. Two seconds time, 
we should see that it's all done. All right, guys, we're nearly at the point where we're gonna light everything up like a Christmas tree and you're gonna see exactly how this system works. Before I do that, I just wanna to explain to you that inside our thermostat for the tank, so the cylinder stat as we call it, you've got a switch that is switched by the temperature within the tank, and then you've also got a thing on a lot of them called the high limit stat. So if the water within the tank gets too hot, that will also knock out a life supply going to the motor side of our two port valve. Guys, while I do that, I just wanna ask you to hit the subscribe button and it's very important to ding the bell as well so you get a notification for when we upload a new video. We've got hundreds of plumbing videos out there now, all fun, all brilliant, and there to help you learn more about plumbing. Also, remember to visit the interactive house, have a good snoop around, try and find Big G, my cat, and learn more about the plumbing in your home as well. And if you're really stuck, it's free to use our Find Your Plumber service to find a plumber local to you in the UK. Finally, comment below on this video because I'll be answering comments about this video on Wednesday night. And if you get a sec and you're interested in history and documentaries, follow my other YouTube channel, Times with James, where you can watch me learn to fly and visit random historical places around Europe. Anyway, really sorry about the interruption, so let's get back on with the video. Right then guys, so we know that we've got an orange wire, a permanent live orange wire that comes from there and goes all the way, let's just draw it down here, an orange wire that goes all the way down here and then gets switched inside our valve. And when does it switch the valve? We know when, because that little arm like we saw and I know I'm very dark at the moment, but these lights are gonna be on in a minute uh, because that little arm, when we saw it, opens up and pushes on that switch and that's when the valve is open. Then it can send a live supply into our pump and also to our boiler. So let's try it out. Live is on. That's calling already. The valve is now currently open. We still don't have a live supply yet. There's a permanent live coming down here in this switch waiting to be switched. The valve is opening, the valve is opening, and now, bang, it should come on. Yes! <laughs> there we go, pump's running. I'm gonna completely knacker that pump out because it's dry, but that's how it works. Let's say the water gets up to temperature. So look, we put that in there. We're gonna turn that down. Hopefully we can get that up to temperature. There we go. So that's hot water in there. So the, the thermostat says, the cylinder says, oh, I've got loads of hot water now, lovely. Turn me off, I'm all good. Then you start using some water, you start running a bath or whatever. Come on, cool down, or we can just make it happen like that. Okay, oh, suddenly we've used some water. The tank's getting cold. We're sending a live to that. The permanent live in the switch here is waiting. It's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting. And then bang, there we go, live supply. That's how these systems are wired up. You only have to worry about one live. It goes off in little different directions. Our live, our permanent live comes in, comes into our programmer. The singular live, hot water on, comes out of here, goes into the thermostat on the side of our tank. Okay, yes. So yeah, the live comes in here, that gets, that then just, all that does is send a live to the motor, the motor just opens. Then that little actuator arm acts on that switch and then switches our permanent live that goes into here, into our pump and off to our boiler. That's how the hot water system side of an S-Plan system works. Now, give me five minutes. I'm just gonna build up the heating side for you. A few minutes later. Right then gang, so we're back again. Now we have a, another light bulb and another two port valve. You guys know already that this two port valve that we've got here is for the heating system side. So let me just grab a pen. Hopefully I've got one that's a different color that's gonna work. So this is the heating side here. So we take our live out of there and we're just gonna jump over this like that and then what happens is we go through a switch and that switch there is the room thermostat now like i said a minute ago the room thermostat does exactly what the tank thermostat does that switches on and off according to the temperature in the room now these days sometimes you can actually get a room thermostat and a programmer all in one um, things like Nest controllers, um, Drayton My Genies. And the good thing as well about all these different things is they always come with a full schematic drawing for you to follow, along with this video, if you've got any different things going on or you're worried about things, to figure out what's happening. This is like an overview video for you. So, and then once that goes into our light bulb, because we're just gonna show that we're getting a live there, that's when we should just send a live to the actual valve itself. And like I said earlier on, see what happens, okay? 
Let's put the live on and see what happens. So we're gonna switch the programmer on. We're already gonna have a closed thermostat, which means it's calling, the room is calling for heat, the house is cold, we want the heating on. So look, let's pop that on. So now we've got power going to the motor on there. Like I said earlier on, we haven't got our permanent lives done up. We look at the back here, look, our permanent lives aren't there. Look at the mess behind there. That mess is usually present up here, which is nice and clean at the moment. That's the, the problem with S-Plan systems, you know? So that's just clicked. So look, give me two seconds. Let me wire up our permanent life. Right then guys, so I've now got our switch live coming back out of here wired up. And look, that's how it works. It goes around here. It doesn't have anything to do with this. Comes down, we've got our switch there, the one that we saw nice and close up. The one that we saw nice and close up earlier on. And then that goes round and then it feeds into here, feeds the pump and feeds the boiler. That's how this works. Let's just prove it. So, programmer calls on because it says, hey, four o'clock in the evening, let's get the house warm. The thermostat here is calling, all right? Because the house is bloody cold. So boom, power is being sent to the live of the motor. The motor is now slowly opening. And then in a minute, that little arm is gonna to touch on that button and send a separate live to here, to our pump and to our boiler. Let's put the hot water on. So our hot water is now calling. This is now individually opening up itself. Okay, I know that they're gonna be switching the same live that we've got up there, but we're gonna hear that click in a minute. So now look, let's turn the hot water off. We should still see that this live is still there because this pump, because this two port valve is still calling. So heating off, that's that off. You know what? Let's turn the hot water off. There you go. That's how two port system works. That's how the wiring of these systems work. I'm gonna be doing a video very soon about Y plan systems. That's single three port valve systems. They've got a slight anomaly when it comes to the wiring between the room thermostat and the thermostat as well. And the thermostat on the hot water tank. So remember what I said, look, all this lot, all this like gubbins here, this gubbins always happens up there. That's why this is so, so difficult for some people to understand. But look at it like this. All our neutrals are there, great. All our earths are here, great. All we need to worry about is our permanent lives and our switch lives. If you can get your head around them, you can get your head about where they come from, you've cracked this. So then, let's pop out to a job where we've got a problem with a two-port valve. You're not actually gonna see me fully change it. You're probably just gonna hear me talk to Judy, who's possibly one of my best customers. I love her. Um, we're gonna disconnect the power, make sure everything's dead, and then we're gonna change these two-port valve heads. So like I've said in the past many times before, if you're not happy with doing electrics or anything like that, don't do it. Get a qualified electrician in. Always get a qualified electrician in, actually. Sometimes it's a handy thing to do as well, is note down the times if you're coming to your customer's house of when they have the heating and hot water on and off. So this button here should switch everything off. Lovely, you still see a display on here. That's because they have a little battery in them to, um, to keep them going in the event of a power cut. But also just in case, we're just gonna pop out the little fuse here. We're just gonna pop that out there and lay that on top of there like so. Next thing I'm gonna do is just take this off. We're gonna test every terminal and make sure that we don't have any live supplies coming into that little box there. Oh, bending down is painful because my legs hurt like hell. Also, it might be worth noting that you can buy every one of the tools you see in this video on my Amazon store. I'll leave a link below as usual. This is the main piece we're gonna need. Ah, and get that on my Amazon store. Oh yeah, baby. See, this to me feels a little bit flim flam. So I wanna change this on the next come here. And then you see that complete bit of glory there. Um, we're just gonna go across all these terminals, every one, just to make sure they're dead. Sometimes you'll get residual live in a neutral or something like that. And also just test the other sides of the terminals. I know they go straight through, but you don't know whether you know, there might be a loose connection or something like that giving you a false reading. So when you're doing a uh, two port valve change, the way you're gonna know that you can take the head off without draining the system down is that the head's gonna have a little dimple just on here, uh, just below or just above, depending on the orientation of the valve, the little slacking nut we've got on here to take the jacket off. Um, so that means you can take that off and if you want to, all you need to do is slack this off, 
There'll be two screws that you'll see down each side, just under there, and you'll be able to take them off. I'm gonna do that to this one in a minute. When you buy a new head, these heads will fit most three port and two port Honeywell valves. And for that reason, they have a white wire on here that if we're doing a two port valve, we kind of want to cut that off and forget about it, okay? We don't need that, but we do need that for the three port valve. And I'll explain why in another video. Do you want me to get that, Judy? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I've got the um, I got my plumber with me today. My James, he, he just wants a word with you because he came in and with a camera and taking <laughs> me because he was going to do this shot, you know, of the, what he's doing here. Just, <laughs> I've just turned you over. He's got to do. He's got to redo it. Hi, Jill. How are you? <laughs> Very well, yeah. I was going to apologise for not getting back to you about the uh, tender for the work over at the house. Lovely. Speak to you soon. I'll put you back to Judy. Here you go. Bye bye. I think she fancies me, Judy. Hey. Nothing. Oh, listen. Um, <laughs> um... Right, this is a tip for the apprentices. If you're ever stripping down, or if you're ever sharpening a pencil, all right, sharpen it away from your fingers. I remember sitting in the van once with my apprentice. And he was sharpening a pencil back towards his hands like that. And I was like, man, you're going to hurt yourself there, dumb boy. This is always a bit of a pain doing this. I don't, I don't like having to do this. My strippers don't actually quite fit this size. She's telling her daughter about the fact that I've turned up with a camera. I think I've met her daughter before and she's... Oh, although a beautiful, beautiful woman, you must say I was that's the old man. You youngins aren't going to get that joke. But there you go, that's life. Step to and son, check it out. The best way of doing these right, rather than stripping every of the old wire out, say you take all the wires out of this control center down here, suddenly you're gonna be like, well, I wonder where they went. I mean, the first thing I'd do anyway is take a photo of the control center on your phone. You know, just do that. I mean, so I'm gonna get my phone now. I'm gonna get it over here. I'm gonna teach you how to take a photo here. Make sure you got the flash on and then just go, bang. You got a photo like that. And then if the worst comes to the worst, you'll be able to go to that photo and refer back to it and hopefully reinstate the system. If you need to take the photo from a few different angles just to get that sort of thing, or if you want to get artistic with it, you know, get misty, um, then you can. Look, we've got our old, our old one here that we just got hanging off the wall like so. So first thing, just remove the clamp. Don't chop the screw. Oh, there it is. You know you're getting old when you make involuntary noises when bending down. Get yourself some long nose pliers and then methodically take out one wire at a time. So you take out the blue wire, which is the neutral of the two port valve you're changing. And then you put the blue wire of the new two port valve in as well. Just change each one. Don't take them all out together. Don't take everything out because if you do, you're not gonna know where those wires go back in unless you've taken a really good photograph. If you do it like that, you're not really gonna go wrong. Uh, it is a swap like for like. If you've got a new two port valve or a different make, um, then you might find that you have to refer to the instructions to figure out which one's the live earth neutral and the switch live in and switch live out. I had to do two here because what had happened was is a funny problem actually. It's quite rare for the two port valves to do this, but the two port valves were closing and they weren't telling the boiler with the micro switch to switch off and therefore the boiler was having nowhere to dissipate its heat It was uh, and it was getting hot and going out on overheat. That was basically it and I've actually recommended that after we did this work, I put an automatic bypass in on the uh, just after the pump and just before the two two port valves to make sure that in the future that didn't happen right then guys i've done this job now judy yeah. talking to the camera thank you very much right i've done this job now um we're gonna have to come back here because there's a few little bits i want to do um just to make this system just improve it so it works how i'd like so we're going to put an atom filter on here uh, and also we're going to put a bypass in as well to prevent this this issue from happening again should either of these two port valves fail. You know, you're gonna look, there's five wires on one of these, actually six. You've cut the white one off. You know the blue one goes to neutral. You know that the green and yellow goes to uh, earth. And then all you've got to worry about then is a live signal and then your switch feed in and out. So it's fairly simple once you've got your head around it. But when you take one of these off and it's just, you know, it's like spaghetti junction, isn't it? So it's, it's sort of getting that in your head. So then guys, there you go, all done. I'm so pleased with how this has gone today. Um, I'm hoping that you are gonna learn more about this. If you've got any questions, comment below. 
Like I said about all the tools that I've used, you can get on our Amazon store, that helps us out loads. And you know, if you need any more help or anything like that, by all means just say. Uh, there's loads of people on the Plumber Parts community and it's good to see you guys in the comments section helping each other out. So if you see anyone commenting who needs a hand, don't go in there all guns blazing. Try and help them out because that's what matters, doesn't it, eh? So if you get a minute before I go, please head on over to my YouTube channel, Times with James, all about stuff that I get up to outside of plumber parts. Also as well, head on over to the interactive house. That's a great thing for you to do if you wanna find out more about the plumbing in your home. I'll be doing a, another video following this one up in exactly the same way, all about Y plan and three port valve systems. And we'll also maybe have a talk about C plan systems as well. If you want us to do that, comment below and I'll add that to the list of videos because we've got literally loads coming up. So if you haven't hit the sub button, by all means do. Anyway, I'll see you soon guys. I'll see you in the next video. And remember if there's one thing you've got to do, that's the whole tack. See you soon. All right, I'm having a lot better car. Speak to you later. I love you. Love you too. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Thanks ever so much for watching all the way to the end guys it's been very very emotional uh, I'll see you in next week's video in fact I'll see you on Wednesday night's video so get your comments in before the end of Sunday and I'll answer them on Wednesday night